Float plane operators in Vancouver Island are just one week away from an Olympic holding pattern, one that could cost them millions of dollars. Olympic airspace restrictions take effect next Friday. Sightseeing tours over the Vancouver area will be banned. And all float plane passengers will face increased security and potential delays. A News reporter Andrew Johnson has been following the story. He joins us live with more. Andrew. Hudson float plane companies say they're missing out on the perfect opportunity to showcase our province. And flight schools on the South Island are preparing to keep their students far away from NORAD patrolled airspace. Boarding a Harbour Air flight to downtown Vancouver is about as simple as air travel gets. Arrive minutes before takeoff, hand over your ticket and climb on in, at least until next Friday. You will have to go through uh, with your baggage, through the screening process, as well as your individual self going through. And then uh, you'll be escorted down to a holding area and then taken onto the aircraft. It'll all happen inside this big box. Passengers will step inside the portable screening unit beginning January 29th, part of Olympic security measures that will be in effect until March 3rd. Harbor Air says it will have to cut its flight schedule in half during that time to accommodate security delays that will come at a heavy price. We've done some running some numbers, probably half a million dollars, both West Coast Air and ourselves, uh, with the schedule reduction and the sightseeing um, um, being taken away from us. Airspace restrictions during the games mean companies like Harbor Air can fly direct flights from point A to point B but cannot offer sightseeing tours at a time when operators would love nothing more. How better to see our province? I mean, it was a, a thing of beauty. The Olympic airspace restrictions are also throwing small plane operators for a loop. The Victoria Flying Club says many of its members are simply going to stay on the ground. This is the, uh, the 30 nautical mile restricted uh, area. We're located right here at the Victoria International Airport. Graham Palmer says recreational pilots are wary of unintentionally flying into the Olympic zone patrolled by the Canadian forces who, in a worst case scenario, will exercise lethal force to protect the airspace. With the threat of, of being shot down, if you enter some of these uh, areas accidentally, you don't kind of want to go flying in those kind of conditions. Flight training is also going to be restricted to a small corridor through the Cowichan Valley, and future pilots are scrambling to fly as often as possible while they still can. Whether the restrictions are too tight, you know, a lot of people would say they don't have to be this tight, um, but we're going to live with it. We have to live with it. This is, this is obviously big for Canada. It's big for British Columbia. And Harbour Air says it will be big for their business when the games have come and gone. It's, it's the future. It's the future and we're excited. Call it short-term pain for long-term gain. Hudson float plane companies are asking passengers to show up about an hour ahead of their flight time, similar to what they'd expect at an airport. And Harbor Air says it's hoping for some kind of compensation for the business it projects it will lose starting next Friday. All right, Andrew Johnson reporting. Andrew, thank you. You're welcome.